Wow, I can't express how great it is to see you guys show up. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. This is Monday, July 25th, the last week of July. And I expect this to be a wild week, one way or the other. The feds are giving us a lot of information this week. We're going to get information about the interest price hike. We are going to get information about inflation and there are a ton of earnings coming out this week. So as I said, one way or the other, there's going to be a lot of market activity, not just for the major markets, but for the OTC as well. Now, what do we do on this show? We focus in on those OTC and penny stocks. Now, remember, a penny stock can be any stock under $5. So they could be on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. That's not a problem. Now, I do my research on the OTC market here, otcmarkets.com. And that's where I get this news. All this news is right here on this site. Just come on over here to current market and they've got a link. That, no, there it is, news. What am I thinking about? <laughs> Click that news button and you can get the news as it's coming in through the day. You gotta refresh the page, but you can keep up with it. And this is news I've looked at over the last few days since about Friday. It's not all the news, it's just the news I read and I'm sharing with you. And if you haven't had a chance to go through the news at all, well, there's some of it for you. So, I like coming over here to the otcmarkets.com website because all the information's current. It's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. And as I said, the news is constantly coming in here. The filings are constantly coming in here. So why go out to Google wasting your time searching for what's happening when that's all they actually put out is current information here? Make your research easy. Save yourself the hassle. Save yourself the time. Come here first. You can't find it? Then go waste your time over at Google. So how did the OTC market fare today? Well, a little better than on Friday. If I remember correctly, I think we were just over 8 billion share total volume for the day on the OTC market. Today we're at 11.5, so that's a nice jump. But that was a big fall. I don't think we had been out of the teens for maybe the whole week. And I was happy to see us stay above 10 billion. And then we dropped down to that 8. And along with that, our dollar volume dropped down here to 1.4 billion. That's 33% down from our average, 2.1, and it hasn't lifted yet. And our trades has even fallen. We were stuck between 250 and 300,000, which isn't great, but we were stuck there. Now we're even lower. So no, not all the way across the board does it look good, but our share volume is coming back up and nothing is going to get better until that share volume starts to grow. Remember a year ago, we were over 40 billion shares a day. Wouldn't it be nice to get back to that? So there was activity today. There were some good runners and gainers. Nothing, you know, hitting them out of the park or anything, but stocks we should be taking a look at. So I've got an array of them I'm going to share with you right now. Come on, I'm all set. Here's a stock that just may be in the right place at the right time. This is a NASDAQ stock. Now remember I told you, any stock under $5 qualifies as a penny stock regardless of what market it's on. And this stock definitely qualifies. This is ticker SBIG, SBIG, Spring Big Holdings. Finished the day at $2.07 with just a mere 14% gains. Now it was much bigger earlier, she did have a big fall. Now we're not looking at this because I think she's gonna run tomorrow. We're looking at this because I think this stock has got some secret potential. I think they are in the right place at the right time. Time. and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here in just a second now the company is a shell company they have a business something just happened I'm going to show you the disclosure here in just a minute back in the middle of June they have a business they're just not doing it yet they're not generating any revenue so that's why they're a shell company but we're looking at this at the right time and considering what just happened on Capitol Hill this could be prime time to consider this so what was the relative volume around the company today Wow, that's a huge jump. That's almost 100 times her normal volume. 130,000 to 14 million. I think it is 100 times. That's some serious increase. Share structure. All right, they haven't given us anything here. Now, I don't believe the share structure has changed. I just think everything's being updated because of the disclosures that are coming out now. I did look this up on Google. I do use Google when I have to. And you try to get a couple places to say the same numbers. That's the problem with Google. You never know how, how outdated the information is. This turned out to be about 41 million shares in the float, 50 million outstanding. So we've got a pretty decent float. 
Financials, well, being a shell company, you know we're not going to see anything over here. And the disclosures is where the story begins here. Now, they've got a few disclosures here, S1s, a Form 4. These have relative bearing, but not as important as I think the 8K is here. So let's take a look at this 8K. This came out June 14th, 2022. And in a nutshell, they're telling us that on June 14th, 2022, they closed the deal. That is the closing date of a merger between Two Terra Capital and Spring Big Holdings. And then they tell us that Spring Big Holdings is now the controlling company. They're going to be doing Spring Big's business under this ticker. What is their business? Well, in all this information here, they don't tell you. No, this is all about the deal itself. But they did have a piece of news, and it's a good thing I saved it because I can't find it again. It went blank on me. But they tell us here what the company does. And I want you to hear in the back of your mind the one word they are not saying in all of this because this is the key element, advertising. Something happened on Capitol Hill today that's going to make a big deal for this company. Spring Big, a leading provider of software as a service based marketing solutions, consumer mobile app experiences, and omni channel loyalty programs to the cannabis industry, today highlighted data from their 4th of July weekend. Now, we're really not interested in the data from the 4th of July weekend. I want to show you what they're doing because that's the big deal here. Spring Big is a marketing leading software platform providing customer loyalty and marketing automation solutions to the cannabis retailers and brands in the USA and Canada. Spring Big's platform connects consumers with retailers and brands. The one word you're not seeing here, you're seeing campaigns, you're seeing messages, you're seeing marketing platforms. You're not seeing the word advertising because believe it or not, advertising for cannabis companies is illegal. Well, kinda. Look at this. This came out today. House passes bill permitting weed ads on TV and radio. The House representatives this week passed legislation to permit cannabis advertising on broadcast television and radio as part of a broader appropriations measure. This just occurred. The legislation is included as part of the fiscal year 2023 Financial Service and General Government Appropriations Bill, which was passed by lawmakers in the House on Wednesday. And you got to keep in mind, it still has to be passed by the Senate. Both houses have to pass this. And to be completely honest, the Senate hasn't had one vote on any cannabis bill that the House has passed. Seven, eight, nine of them now. And the Senate's never voted on any of them. So... I hate to say don't hold your breath, but that's what's going on here. Now, they tell us that the legislation gives broadcasters access to the growing market for cannabis advertising, which is expected to total $18.5 billion this year alone. Folks, we have less than six months left in this year. And if this kicks off, they believe there will be over $18.5 billion thrown at this advertising market. And this company is in a prime position. Now, I'm not going to tell you this is the only company out there that's going to be doing this. There's a lot of companies working with cannabis media, cannabis education, cannabis awareness, and they could all jump on board. But let me tell you what, there's probably only 10 or 12 at the most and $18.5 billion between them, that's going to be a ton of money. And this company is just getting going. So they could be in the right place at the right time. Now, the one thing we do have to keep in mind is that because this was passed through the appropriations annual bill, it's going to have to be rewritten every year unless they put it somewhere else. So if we want to keep cannabis being advertised on TV, it will have to be put back into next year's annual bill and rewritten to make everybody happy unless they put it somewhere permanently. All right, let's go take a look at that chart. If I remember correctly, I don't even think this chart goes back as far as you would think it would. It's a pretty skimpy four-hour, six-month chart for SBIG. Actually, it's only about a month and a half. I guess that's when the ticker SBIG went live, right at the time that that filing came out, the reverse merger was closed. And I have not done any research on the ticker before. I don't know what the chart looks like, and I don't think it's really important. That was that company. This is this company. It's kind of like the old marriage has nothing to do with the new marriage, right? They're two separate spouses. 
So this started off on June 15th at $6.60. And two weeks later, woo, she was down to $1.61. Pretty much floated sideways all this time doing hardly anything at all until today we have a launch, breakout in volume, kick up over top of the 50-day SMA, a big jump in price, even though she had a big strong pullback, there was nothing to do any of this. Unless there was a tweet I missed, there was no filings, there was no news. Unless the news from Capitol Hill. I mean, I may not be the only one who can put two to two together. You know, others may be connecting the dots as well. So the technicals, well, I'm not going to call them hot, but they look pretty bloody warm to me. Not bad at all. Let's look at that 20-day, one-hour. All right, she has been falling, of course, and you can see she was fighting. The pre-market activity, multiple days in a row were huge jumps. What sort of jumps are those? Those are going from $1.85 up to two. Those are a dollar jump. Those are huge pre-market activities. So she did have this big launch today, and she got on top of the 200, got way above it, and it looks like she's pretty much sitting on top of it. Technicals are warm, but look like they're cooling off on the one hour. Five day, five minute. All right, she was going flat, riding on the 200, under on it. And then today she did get a good launch. My goodness, let's come in on that. She ran for a long time, didn't she? She started here at $1.86, went to $3.25. So you're looking at 80% oh, gains, I guess that would have been at her high. And she stopped here at about uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, roughly. 10 to 2. That's a long run. Woo-hoo. And then she fell very abruptly. Fell all the way back down to the 200. Thank God the 200 isn't this low. That big rise did pull the 200 up. And she's sitting there right now. Technicals look really cold. Don't look like it's going to do anything. I don't expect that this is going to take off and pop and run, but you never can tell. People can be putting this dot to dot together and coming up with their own pictures. I mean, there's not a lot of details you've seen. I put a picture together. I sketched it myself. I really don't know how big of an effect it could be, how soon it could be. I don't know if the Senate's going to pass this law. So there's a lot of potential here if things are played outright and this company plays their cards right. I am presuming they would go into advertising because that's what they're working with, trying to get the consumers to become loyal to their brands and their dispensaries. And advertising is definitely that market, right? So I think this company has potential. Put it on your watch list if you don't like it right now. See if the price dips. There could be a lull in news. We could see this actually come down some more. I mean, we had a low of $1.61, so she could. If she dips underneath this 200, she could start to fall back towards that area. But I think it has potential. What do you think? Now, this is one of the companies that was a big hitter today. Would you believe it was actually in the metaverse? Well, kind of. This is ticker IPNFF. Imagine AR. She finished today at six and a half cents with over 116% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We like to call that the better tier because you have to audit your financials to be here. That makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. They've also got the two green ticks I'm always telling you to look for, a verified profile and a transfer agent. That's more verified information. And we got a bonus here. They are penny stock exempt. That means they're not risky. They're not a startup company. The literal definition is that they've been in business for three to five years with their filings always on time, no problems, and they've literally had millions of dollars in the bank that entire time. So this is all looking really good. Now the company tells us that they are an augmented reality platform that enables businesses of any size to create and implement their own AR campaigns with no programming or technology experience. Every organization, from professional sports franchises, which is where they seem to be doing most of their business and the news today was about, to small retailers can develop interactive AR campaigns that blend the real world and digital worlds using Imagine's ARTM. Customers simply point their mobile device at the logos, signs, buildings, products, landmarks, and more to instantly engage videos, information, advertisements, coupons, 3D holograms, and any other interactive content that's all hosted on the cloud. So that's what they do. 
So what was the relative volume around the company's news today? Well, they normally do 62,000 shares and today they did 2.2 million. I gotta say I'm surprised. I didn't actually look at this beforehand and I thought it was gonna be a lot more than that. But even that is something like, oh, I don't know, I think that's over 150 times her normal volume. So it is a big percentage increase, although it's not a lot of share volume. I think this has more to give. Share structure, what do we got for the float? Well, I always go to the unrestricted shares. That's as close as you're gonna get to the float. They do have the float listed down here, but it's either old or it's wrong. I just don't go by this anymore. So since it's not here, and I did not pre-look this up, I'm gonna go look it up before I put this online. If I don't forget, I'm gonna put it right there. If I can't find anything, though, I'll put up three question marks so you know I at least looked but couldn't find anything. Fair? All right, hopefully I get something up there. Financials. What do we got over here? Well, we have nothing listed here, and I'm wondering if I look at the disclosures, quarterly financial statements. Okay, they are listing their quarterlies here. See that F at the end? It's a foreign company, and a lot of times foreign companies don't get as much information brought over here to the OTC US market side. So it's not that they don't have them, it's just not always available here. But they do have all of their filings caught up. You know, they are penny stock exempt. I know, I know, they're still pennies, right? And they're still on the OTC market. What that really means is they don't have to abide by all the rules that penny stocks have to jump through, all those hoops, because they've done proven themselves to be all grown up and responsible now. So we know everything looks good here. So let's take a look at that news. Now they got a ton of news, folks. And all I can say is all this news is about deal after deal after deal that they're making. They're getting other companies to help them do what they do. But most of this has to do with wrestlers, baseball players, football players. They just keep getting all these different sports icons into their business. And today was the first team that they actually got. Imagine AR Science first NFL team the Baltimore Ravens to a two-year agreement to deliver interactive mobile augmented reality fan experience. And there's really not much more to say, but we'll take a look at the piece of news. Imagine AR is honored to announce the signing of a two-year partnership agreement with the NFL Baltimore Ravens to provide its augmented reality mobile platform for fan activation and engagement. This two-year revenue sharing agreement makes the Baltimore Ravens the first NFL team to integrate the Imagine AR augmented reality SDK platform to deliver metaverse fan immersive experience. And if you want some more information, they've got a little bit more there, but that's what it's all about, folks. They've been getting individuals all the way along the way, and now they got an entire team. And God only knows how many more they're going to get, but that's what had this running today. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what it's going to continue doing. Six month, four hour chart for IPNFF. We got a high bubble back here of almost 14 cents and a low bubble about five days ago, just over two cents. We had a serious breakout over the 200 day SMA, which he has not been really over at all these last six months. And speaking of not being over the 200, if you look at the one year, one day, she has not even been close to it for a year on the one year, one day. And today she hit it very first time. She didn't stay above it, but she did crack the ice. And as you can see, technicals are really pushing up hard on the yearly. Technicals on the four hour. My goodness, folks, look at this. We're talking straight up activity. This is beautiful. Very, very, very powerful. Let's come down to that one hour view. All right. She hasn't been doing anything for many a days. Hit a low bubble, bounced off it just to get right back to where she was even started doing less activity, was getting squeezed between the 20 and the 50 day SMA, and then whoo, here comes the news to squeeze her right out. And she shot up hard, all the way up here to seven cents, just a wee bit over. And look at the volume at the end of the day, folks. That's a lot of leftover volume. Technicals are screaming on the one hour. Doesn't look like there's any pullback at all. Let's look at that five day, five minute. All right, today, another long runner all day long. She went sideways for a brief period right here. This, not even sideways. She was slowly climbing with just a minimal dip right there. She hit a high bubble, 
I always expect a pullback off of a high bubble. You just do, not a drop, just a pullback, a breather, and then they start to climb again. Our PPO, our uh, percentage price oscillator is above the pink. This is a lot like the MACD, but it works on the percentage of the price rather than the price itself. This is the MACD. We got a crossover just about ready to happen. This looks good. This looks great. This shows us trend strength. Right now, if it's going down while the PPO is going up, you get some very strong price growth. So that's starting to look very potentially strong. And our RSI is just coming up into the 60, mid 60s. So everything looks really hot. Now I wanna look at that one minute. I wanna see how she actually finished the day. Look, she did pull back and then started to climb again. And then just at the bell, she stopped climbing. But everything looks like it is going to continue on, folks. Now, I don't know how much push she's going to have, but she was climbing all day long and just little itty-bitty pullbacks. There was no drop the whole day. She was bouncing off of the 20 on the one minute, and she is still above the 20, still above her 10. Everything looks really good. I'd at least watch this for tomorrow, but keep in mind that this company's got a very long list of potential customers in every single sport. And if you look at the chart, and you see the bounces if we go back to say the four hour view you see all these big green bounces they all correlate to news and this company puts out news uh, once a month sometimes twice a month that's how often they're making deals so you can get some good bounces out of this stock every time it has news remember i've told you about making watch lists just for news you don't have to be watching the volume if you see the volume moving on these sort of stocks you're probably late you want to see the news come out and as soon as the news comes out that's when you want to get in because you know they have a habit of running on the news so as you can see this had a power pack today volume was strong the surge was strong and it's put itself in a very strong position above this big sma so i'm liking ipnff you should have got another penny stock from the nasdaq here this is versus systems ticker vs now, they didn't have any news or filings today, but they did have news on the 22nd. And I found the news pretty interesting. Now, today, for some reason, the stock started to run. It had a good jump, was very volatile, and then had a bad crash. I'm not happy with where the chart ended today. However, I found the news interesting. It looks like the company's evolving, and I think they need it. And I think they're getting into something fresh and new. So I'm going to share this with you nonetheless. So VS finished the day at just over 45 cents and almost 13% gains. Now their description, this is where they're evolving from as far as I can tell. Versus makes interactive media more fun. The company's developed a proprietary in-game rewards engine that allows game publishers and developers to offer in-game prizing across multiple platforms including mobile, console, PC games, and streaming media. And now, TV. Brands pay to place their products in the game and gamers compete for those prizes resulting in high brand engagement. So what was the relative volume today? Well it was actually pretty darn big considering there was no fresh news or filings. Jumped from three quarter million to 42 million. You're looking at about 50 times her normal volume with no fresh catalyst on the table. Share structure. Share structure. <laughs> Well, we got 20 million, 21 million outstanding. And I did look this up earlier, so I know this. Unrestricted shares is where I go for my float. 17 million is about what she's got. So it's a terrific float. Financials, hey, look at that. We got somebody making money. We got to take three zeros, throw those behind there. So they made just over three quarter million dollars last year, which isn't as much as they made the year before. The great news, doesn't cost them a cent for that. Digital products, you know, you don't have to order any materials, you don't have to have a factory. So they get to keep every penny they make. Quarterly with sort of money, uh-oh, we got nothing here. I don't even see 2022 listed here. Ooh, so maybe the news that came out on the 22nd is more important than I think it is. Disclosures, we got anything fresh over here. Uh, you've got some 6Ks over here and a 42. Uh, I did glance at these. Nothing jumped out at me as being a catalyst, but the news, that was a whole different story. So let's jump on over to that news. Now, they do have the right to put their press releases right here. 
But the company's got to initiate that, and they haven't done that in a long time. January 2021 is the last news that was brought here. Now, the OTC market will bring in news from the Internet, and thank God they have. This news we're going to be looking at today came from the Globe Newswire website. But I wanted you to notice here that they went on the NASDAQ November of 2020. As soon as they got there, in January, they did a reverse split in 2021. A 1 to 16 reverse split to make it to the NASDAQ to get the price up. But this is where it got really unfair to the investors. As soon as they got there, they did a public offering. Started selling more shares at $7.50. And right now, we're at 45 cents. Now, they do have a notification from NASDAQ right now regarding their minimum bid price deficiency. That price of $0.45 cents is the danger zone. On the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, you can't let your price go under a dollar, not for too long. If it's under a dollar for too long, you get a warning. And I do believe you get 180 days, roughly six months, to get your price over a dollar. It has to close over a dollar for 20 days straight, or they'll delist you. They will yank you right off of the NASDAQ and throw you down to the OTC market like we're a dungeon or something. So I don't know how long this has been going on, uh, but they have their warning now. So that sounds like bad news, but there is a stimulating factor to it. I see a lot of stocks on the NASDAQ under a dollar that all of a sudden get this big surge and they push it right up over a dollar. I don't know how and I don't know where the power comes from, but it's something I like to look for. And then today, we did have that news came out. Versus System Science, first television contract for new team-focused TV channel. They tell us on the 22nd that Versus Systems today announced it has signed its first contract in the over-the-top OTT streaming media and TV vertical, a significant milestone in the company's history and a cornerstone in the company's growth plan. Versus plans to bring its reward-based fan engagement technology to an OTT sports team-focused TV channel that is expected to launch in the fourth quarter of 2022. Interesting. The multi-year agreement includes adding interactive and second screen elements to shows and content connected to a new OTT channel that will launch the fourth quarter of this year. Sponsorships and advertising on streaming media is going to be more personalized, more contextual, and more rewarding than traditional linear broadcast TV ads could ever be. It's clear that content creators and distributors are eager to find new ways to create innovative, rewarding connections between audiences, brands, and the content they love. That's where Versus is going to succeed. So you're getting into a reward system through TV. I don't know how it's going to work. I haven't seen it before. And it's involved with sports, which means you've already got a captive audience, don't you? So let me show you this very volatile chart and how it ended today. And I don't know where this is going to go, but now you know as much as I do. That is the six-month, four-hour chart for VS. We got a high back here of $3.86, and just a couple of days ago, we hit $0.35. Cents. Right now, we are at $0.45. Cents. You can see she hasn't even come close to the 200 except in the last two weeks where she's actually broke through it twice. But she's been having a hard time just getting up over the 50 and staying there. 20-day, one-hour view. Well, we had a jump here. Let me see. This is uh, July 8th. This is July 11th. Well, I looked at the news. There wasn't anything until July 14th and back here in June. So I don't know why it jumped here. It actually broke a dollar, though that didn't hold it at all. We fell all the way back to a low bubble here. And it was the day the news came out. She had a small jump, pulled right back down to the floor, took another jump today, and fell back down to the floor. Technicals are very cold. Five day, five minute. So there's Friday. News came out early, obviously. We had a big jump, fell all the way back to the 200. In the middle of the day, we had another pounce, back to the 200, another jump, almost to the 200, but not all the way there. You can see, as I said, very volatile. Lots of jumps in just a couple of days. And then at the end of the day today, she fell hard. And I didn't realize it, but she's still falling after market hours. 
Ooh, is this looking bad? Now you see here, folks, my PPO and my ADX. You see how this kind of looks like a mirror image? When these two lines, that blue line and red line, are coming close, the price is falling. The closer they get, the more it falls. When they start to pull away, the price will start to grow tremendously. So right now, she's definitely in a fall pattern. The MACD is way under the signal line, though it does look like she's on top. She is, and the RSI is in the basement. So no, I don't expect this to take off tomorrow. However, with this volatility, one can only guess. But now you know that they've got a TV channel that they're going to be working on with sports and they're going to have prizes built into this so that viewers actually watching can win stuff while they're watching the TV. Oh man, that's better than the home shopping channel. Anybody still hungry? I got leftovers for you. You know, as I'm trading through the day, I'm accumulating all these stocks that catch my eye and we might maybe talk about. Then when the day ends, I got to choose three of them all and we focus in on those. But rather than just waste all my DD or deprive you of the benefits of it, I'm going to give you the tickers and the catalyst right now for the stocks we just didn't have time to talk about. And you can pick it up from there. Have you forgotten about TXTM, Protex Mobility? This was a big acquisition back in the middle of June, Republic of South Africa Medical Marijuana Dispensary. This is the largest medical marijuana company in South Africa. They had a big run, and then it got quiet, and nobody's talking about it. Well, they had a conference on Friday. It was on YouTube, and they took questions in advance, and they did the conference. Well, somebody put out a tweet, and basically, I think that tweet got everybody involved. Not just the tweet. The conference that definitely helps, but this really shows you what's going on. She says, once again, TXTM would not have mentioned all of this on live conference to thousands of viewers if it were not true. They could go to jail for fraud if they're lying. I strongly believe that they're telling the truth. Going to be a great ride. Now, here's some of the things that they talked about. Zero debt and debt free. No reverse split. Farm expansion plans. $10 billion in carbon credits over the next five years. Two to three billion dollars in seed revenues alone, 300 to 400 million dollars in purchase orders, and it goes on and on here. Now, if you're interested, you want to get this straight from the horse's mouth over here at YouTube, just put in TXTM and you'll probably find it. But if you go to filters, but it is RSAMMD acquisitions, TXTM, it is a 36 minute interview that was on Friday. Another company that you don't want to take off of your radar, EMGE. I've talked about this a couple of times. As a matter of fact, I want to give a shout out to Mad Scientist. Mad Scientist is a new viewer. He made a comment on my YouTube video. He said, okay, I'm going back and I'm watching all your videos. EMGE, VAPR, you called those months ago. And it's the truth, folks. I did cover these a while ago. When I tell you that I think a stock has potential, what I'm saying is I see this stock growing in the future. Given the right circumstances, this thing could get big. Potential means it may run tomorrow, it may run next week, but I definitely see it running later on down the road. And this is one of those companies. And they're still running on news from the 21st when they closed on their acquisition of Regen Bio Wellness and they got Jim Morrison and on their team, which is a former L'Oreal president. And this went up 45%. And what did TXTM go up? Uh, about 11%. Maybe it was more. Uh, third stock that I was interested in today was PPCB, Propanic Biopharma. Went up 38% today. They had news a few days ago. Propanic Biopharma successfully produces synthetic recumbent whatever that is. It's the only news on the table and she has bounced a couple times from this. So that was one we could have talked about. Another one that keeps coming up over and over is Jet Black. This is on the pink tier. She did 25% gains today on a tweet as far as I can tell folks. A tweet. This came out from the company themselves. It came out seven hours ago so it was about one o'clock, two o'clock, somewhere around there. We will put out an update tomorrow regarding the progress on one of our smaller acquisition targets. 
They just got done telling us a couple days ago, there's a lot of due diligence and work currently in progress on the big deal. Deals like this take time. Multiple parties need to agree. Progress is being made. And they had told us earlier that they were doing a big deal and had a couple of small deals. So now they've just told us that they are going to, <laughs> thank you very much, they are going to give us more information tomorrow. So watch Jet Black tomorrow. Come here, Twitter. As soon as that tweet comes out, if it starts to move, you may want to be on that plane. Get it, Jet Black. Uh, another one, KRTL, Cartel Holding Group. <laughs> what a name, Cartel. Uh, FINRA approves name and ticker change for Cartel Holding Group. They don't mention anything about what they do, what kind of work they do, what kind of business that they're going to be into. They just change their name to align <laughs> with the kind of work they're going to be doing. That's what they say. Well, what kind of works do cartels do? So that went up 43%, at least it ended 43% up today, just on a name change. I do know that they are involved uh, with uh, CBD and psilocybin, and KRTEL Biotech is an international research development company with operations in U.S., Korea, and Canada, if that helps. And the last stock I do want to share with you, even though it's really not a penny stock anymore, this is Redbox, ticker RDBX. And don't forget the warrant. It is a penny stock, RDBXW. This stock is getting a lot of attention and a lot of heat, folks. This is the one that just went, is going through the merger with Chicken Soup for the Soul. Chicken Soup for the Soul owns a lot of different media, including Crackle that they bought from Sony back in 2020. Well, Reddit is looking at this. Shorters are looking at this. And what can happen is this can turn into the next GameStop or AMC. And it's funny, too, because all three of these companies, GameStop, AMC, and Redbox, are what you would call fading businesses. Businesses that were dying very slowly, but were just going to fade away. And now, all of a sudden, you see shorters looking at them saying, oh, that price is going to fall. That price is going to fall because it's, it's worth nothing. And then you have people start buying it, pushing the price up. Well, if the price goes up, shorters are going to lose money. They need it to go down, not up, because they borrowed those shares. And they have to then start getting those shares back by buying them. And they have to buy them for more money than they had for them. So they start losing money fast, and that's when the price goes up, 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 and that's called a short squeeze. And right now, there's a lot of attention being focused on this company for that reason. So Reddit's looking at it. Shorters are looking at it. Maybe you should be looking at it. So there's a barrage of information for you on Monday, folks. We had all that scrolly news you could go through, the three stocks I focused in on, and that very messy leftover buffet I just gave you. I started rushing there because I see I'm running out of time, and I do want to get this out before 8 o'clock. So, folks, I hope I'm giving you information and you're not just leaving it there, that you're actually doing some more DD behind what I show you. I'm trying to bring you strong, solid leads so that you have places to start. Hopefully, these are making you money as well. Remember, not all the stocks I show you are going to run tomorrow. That's what technicals tell us. We're watching the volume. But between now and the time they run, do a little DD. See if the stock interests you. See if it gets you excited. If you get excited, if you see the opportunity, then it's probably there more so than not. So, DD, it is your friend. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Thank you.